Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. American today. Is that hail to the wow. chief? Yeah. I think it's close enough. It's close enough. I mean, enough. It's, yeah, it's, good. it's big news. Hail to the Lord. Hail to the Lord, hot dog. Hail to the Lord, hot dog. Who do we have here today, Jared? We have a very distinguished guest. Someone so distinguished that they should not even be on this set. Mm. Tell us his name for the for the audience, please. Um, it's the on, honorable, right? Yeah, Is that honorable. Any, yeah. yeah, honorable mm-hmm. Adam Kissinger. It's Kinsinger. 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 Come on. You know what though? But I, like, even on my committee, they don't ever get it right. Ever? Yeah, never. It's, ever. It's Kinsinger. Ger. Kinsinger. Ger. Kinsinger. Yeah. Read how it's fucking spelled, bro. That's I don't it. remember where. I'm, you know, words, 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 just science. Like when, math. Here's here's what we know. We know at Josh Hopkins University, we focus yeah. on medicine and not on on, on words. vowels. Nobody gives yeah. a fuck. And about you words. should. And no you one, should. Words yeah. are pointless. Right. We That's can right. just Kinsinger. like I yeah. can snap and point at something. You know exactly what I'm saying. So what the fuck is the point of all these words? Nothing at all. Yeah. No. I mean, it's we nonsense. we talk in, in in normal people words, not them college people words. Yeah. Right? No. I, I and I here's what I like. It's gonna be difficult. Then. He's one of your beef fries, and you don't you don't even know how to say his last name. I know. That's what I, I love. Listen, it. I, does it hurt? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, when's no. my birthday? What? When's my birthday? I don't know. October okay. something. Nope. <laughs> anyway, nope. when's his? like I just I just got excited. <laughs> I don't know. It was like two weeks ago or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got excited. Like yeah, it was like when the same. I first met him. I kept saying Kissinger, and I just I I remember reading and correcting myself. I was like, I like the way I was saying it better. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's funny cause now because now I know that you know you're not actually going to end up being a really good friend, just more of an acquaintance. <laughs> mm. That's that good is though. not that is not a thing because what is more, it, 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 does it is it let, let's go down this road. Does it does it matter if I know what your favorite color is, or does it matter that I show up? When you need me, you to know show what? Up. It's showing up when you need me. Okay, that's right, man. Yeah. I'm in. Okay, you yeah. want to sanitize your hands after that? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I know all about him. You know, oh, Illinois State University. Ooh, that's right. Um, he started uh, the 11th district, uh, 2011 to 2013. That's no big. Down. That's off the cuff. It's not. I know that your parents are Russ and Betty, Joe, and <laughs> yeah. they're real proud of you. Things like that. And th- this is the type of work that I do before we come on the show. You can't even say his last name right. I'm just saying. You won't even answer a text from him, and I do every time. It hurts on the inside. The two of you text like New Jersey teenagers a week before (laughs) spring break. I don't have time for that because I got two kids that I just found out their school has been canceled for the next two weeks. Due to uh, I've got two kids and one the of them is riding a dirt bike right now with the cat. Yeah, I, and I'm surprised if they don't both have the virus and you guys don't care over there. Like, <laughs> and that's what I love about they you. They might actually. Kids don't really show symptoms for the most part. So yeah, that's true. true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but we've got some some serious matters here to talk about because uh, this could be the last flight of the week potentially. Yeah. Um, we heard a rumor that schools were going to be closed. Um, from the coronavirus, I which could be stuck here. You could be stuck here forever, which I'd be amped about, by the way. Yeah, um, and I you brought, get a house. I brought my camera. Yeah, like, <laughs> you <laughs> have you an need. extra house all to yourself, so <laughs> you're good to go. Um, but now they've changed it to COVID nineteen. Right? Um, why? I think that's a sign. That's more just because it's the scientific thing. Well, nineteen is the year that it started. I don't know. It yeah. is, but have you noticed the, the subtle name changes as it's gone along? Mm. And they've corrected people. In, in your profession. You mean like yeah. ISIL instead of ISIS? I mean, COVID, I think, yeah. is, is yes. more... Is more s- it's more scary. Yeah. COVID-19. That sounds like... Do you think Corona paid the federal government to start saying COVID? Probably. Instead? Maybe. That's my guess. Because <laughs> they... I'll tell you what I think it is. They though. were losing, like, something like 40% of Americans said they uh, wouldn't buy Corona. If you're not yes. buying Corona, because, you know, come on. But I think part of it is because... There was maybe an understanding. So coronavirus is a thing that's been around forever, just not mm-hmm. this version. Of it. I, yeah, so it's, it's like a cold. Decades. Yeah, because it's on, yeah. decades it's on decades. the Lysol. Like, yeah, the Lysol. It label. says coronavirus. Yeah. yeah, and people are gonna be like, "Well, they knew about this." Well, it's a it's a, for, a variation of it, and actually, it keeps changing, kind of formation or I get mutating is a scarier word, but it changes a little bit, which is why it's so no, hard to track. No, we're all a big X Men fan. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. prefer mu- we prefer mutating. Yeah, actually. yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah. it's like, a lot more. What, what would, you, of, would you like a sip of water? Yeah, that is from Ooh. Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan. Oh, nice. Dead serious. One yeah. of our listeners sent that in. Nice. Just in case the world was going to end. Yeah. Dan and I asked that we had something on the on the set that we that we could kill ourselves with immediately, yeah. and they sent in Flint <laughs> yeah. water. 
dead serious. That's why that's there. <gasps> when did you guys get that? Uh, oh, maybe no. six months ago, yeah. seven months wow. ago. Six months. Yeah. Uh, and he ah. opened it up, and, and it was a whole thing. It said, hey, only Well, earlier today, wine. he thought Michigan was Illinois. So. Yeah, he doesn't. No, he thought, he thought Detroit like, was in Illinois. And he, yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh, it's all Midwest. You're from the Midwest. Goddamn right. And that also hurts your feelings like it hurt mine. Yeah. yeah. He hates Michigan, though. I'm from your home state, brother. I know. Born in Peoria, Illinois. We're basically twins, basically, because you're Peoria. I'm Bloomington. Yeah. War on 74. I think you're like a year older, but like by a day. Like our birthday is like the same. Two right? days. Yeah, probably like 10 years. You're, you're a probably year, like 10 years older You're a than year me. and two days older <laughs> than me. I think you're a few summers yeah. older than me. It is what it is. I look you young. Have a lot of city miles. You have a lot of city miles on well, you. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things. I could be abducted at any second. People think I'm that young. Um, I don't want to. That's for another show, obviously. Uh, you look like you could play my father in a movie. I, again, I really don't want to get into that. But yeah, I'm from Peoria. And oddly enough, if you haven't heard of that, there's another... F- Relatively famous comedian from there, ah, Richard Pryor. Yeah, heard of him. that's right. Weird, right? Yeah. You talking about the guy that set yeah. his head on fire? Yeah, he did smoke yeah. crack. Mm. Uh, that guy, and then Bradley University, yeah. who had just made the NCAA tournament, which they're not going to play, that's had qualified terrible. for the Big Dance. Yeah. Bradley University, right. by the way, was started by uh, Bradley Cooper. Was it really? Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't Jerry Bradley in 1847. Yeah. You got like the Vietnam. most famous singer ever from Illinois too, Michael Jackson, Kurt Cobain. Ah, was he? I, what? I thought he was, was from he? Seattle. Uh, yeah. He might have been from Seattle. <laughs> might be, yeah, but Jared, <laughs> you are not even half in the bag. You're, you're a full body in it. I'm a full body. Yeah, full yeah, yeah. Ba- full Your baggy. eyes are glazed like a fucking Krispy no. Kreme donut. Well, we were having doubles at lunch. Yeah. Oh, you were? Uh, yeah. yeah. Had, a cu- had a couple of those. Yeah. I love that. I love that you'd come on the air during that. Yeah. Uh, what's the real shit with this virus? I think, look, it's real. Here's the thing that people have to remember is 80 to 90% of us it will have symptoms like a cold or even in some cases no symptoms the concern on this is how fast it's transmitting like it moves fast and you know there are certain people that are very vulnerable to this mm. you know older people that's nice. and uh that's the big that's the big concern so the vast majority of people, i think people are scared because they think it's like ebola and their eyes are going to bleed it's not if you get it you're probably going to be okay mm. it's just you're transmitting it to people that won't be okay and the concern i have is i think it's been here a lot longer than we actually realized because I mean, think about it china knew they had it probably in november december they were still you know, a lot of chinese people were flying here bringing that and uh, and right now, you know, they've locked their country down, and that's why they're seeing the numbers decrease. Italy's where Italy is right now, so I think what the president's doing is right. It's not fun, mm-hmm. but I think if we get this under control, the other thing is we don't want to overwhelm the healthcare system. That's mm-hmm. that's actually the biggest concern. But if we get this under control, then uh, I think the economy comes back mm-hmm. quickly. A lot of people were talking shit to Trump about um, his comments regarding making sure people who don't need the test aren't getting it. Because there have been reports of people feeling like they need it and medical professionals were turning them away. Look, under most circumstances, if if you go to a doctor and they say, oh, you don't need this, you probably don't need it. Yeah. Like, get off of WebMD. Yeah. You don't have cancer because your head hurts. Fuck face. Just calm down. Yeah. The problem is when you have a story this big that has consumed not only media but uh, your neighbor's friends and family, people who don't often talk to you about things like this, mm-hmm. you start to feel paranoid yourself. Yeah, it's Therefore, true. little coughs, mm-hmm. little sneezes, things like that that are going on in your house, you're like, oh shit, well, I, well, I just got off a flight three days ago. Yeah. Or I, I, I was at the gym. Like, I, No lie, before this, this show, I was at the gym talking to somebody who I'd been friends with for years. And I was telling him I, I just got off a, a plane three days ago. I could see him slowly back yeah. up during our conversation and I don't know what it is. Therefore, you know, obviously as a comedian, I was going to take an easy shot. Like, <laughs> hey, man, are you de me? Like, no, this is what this feels like as you walk back. Um, but I kind of got it in a way where I was just like, well, shit, I'm not going to say anything, even jokingly, because I don't know that I have it. Yeah. And so like in D.C. right now, it's uh, I mean, you know, we had people from every state coming in. It's fly in season. So everybody comes to kind of talk about appropriations. And so everything's crowded. But. It's also cherry blossom season. That's when my allergies kick off and everybody else's does. And so, you know, I had a little bit of a sore throat and I was worried legitimately that's gone now. So Mm -hmm. that was allergies. But the the one thing you don't want, you want people to take this seriously because the faster, though, we can get this leveled 
And then, again, if the, the damage to the economy will be minimal, a lot of the money that came out of the stock market, people are sitting on, going, waiting for the right time. Mm-hmm. Yep. They'll reinvest, and we'll have a growing economy by the time the president's up for re-election. That's my hope, if this gets done quickly. Are you up for re-election in, in uh, yeah. 2020? You every, two every, every two okay. years in Congress. Every two years. So it's uh, this will be my – I'm in my fifth term already, which is 10 years. And, uh, yeah, so I'm up again in November. I'm Illinois the last a, Republican north of Peoria, actually. I was going to say, Illinois is a very blue state. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, it's it's surprising that you've lasted that long. Yeah. And they haven't taken you out. They tried. They've they tried. Did. Oh, yeah. They they redrew the districts 10 years ago and because and re, they do that every census. Mm. And they tried to get rid of me. I won. And, uh, you know, I, they'll probably try to come after me again in this next redistricting, which is like now. It'll be not this next election, but the 2022, next 2022, yeah. But I just, you know, it's a survive. Look. You know the people of Illinois. You've got Chicago, and then you have the rest of Illinois. And yeah. the rest of Illinois you know, is Democrats or Republicans, but they love, you know, we, we call them, they love God, they love their guns, they love their country, and, uh, and they're great, great people, and, and, and Trump speaks to them. You know, this, my district used to actually be a Democratic district. I beat a Democrat to get elected. And now it's pretty solidly Republican because we're winning these, like, the blue-collar union voters. Yeah, I mean, it's it's strange because, you know, for years and years and years, you take Chicago, right? It's, yeah. When everybody thinks of Illinois, they think of Chicago. Mm-hmm. It's Rahm Emanuel. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, Obama's boy. Yep. Like, that's what you think of when you think mm-hmm. of that. How are you changing that within your own state? And how do you think that shifted with Trump in office? So the thing that shifted with Trump, so I'd always gotten supported by the I, the blue-collar unions, like the private, you know, like the operating mm-hmm. engineers, the laborers, um, because... The Democrats used to speak well to him because it's always about labor and jobs issues, and then they've gone full California, right? They've mm-hmm. gone full the squad and AOC. It's identity politics yeah. within the union infrastructure. Yeah. I saw a guy. I worked in some of those campaigns in, in Wisconsin, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Same yeah. stupid bullshit totally. everywhere. Yeah, and so I, what I'm trying to do is to say, look, you know, the the Republican that's going to win statewide in Illinois is not going to look like the Republican that's going to win statewide in North Carolina or South Carolina. It's just a different kind. Mm-hmm. But they're all conservative. It's how you talk differently. It's kind of reaching out to those audiences. So what I've tried to do is just as a younger guy, it's I think I can reach a different audience. It's talking about urban issues. You know, as conservatives, we're actually – I think more compassionate for people born into a tough environment in the south side of Chicago because what we want is that young kid to be able to actually pull himself up by his bootstrap, start a business or raise a family and make money. And, uh, and you know, when you addict somebody to government payments, you take away that opportunity for them. Yeah. Uh, Jared always says it on this show. you got to think locally and then act globally. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. that's yeah. words to live by out of Jared yeah, Taylor. He's, he's, a, <laughs> he's a brilliant man. So while yeah. you're here, let's get your predictions well, for, you. uh, for 2020. It's shaping up uh, Biden versus Trump, assuming Biden stays alive. Mm-hmm. Um, Dan and I have discussed this a lot, uh, especially on, on news last night. He has a, a cognitive disorder, it looks like. And it, usually we joke around on the show, and I, I'm actually not joking when I yeah. say this. Like, that's what it genuinely seems like. How does he hold up for? I mean, tomorrow night, right? Yeah. It, it's we're recording this Saturday night, uh, the 14th. Mm-hmm. He's got a debate one on one against Bernie. They've they've shrunk his um, rallies down to around seven minutes total. He's going to be mm. stuck on national television for two hours tomorrow night on a debate. Wow. How does he hold up one on one? against Bernie in a debate, and then how does he do it against Trump? Yeah, because, I mean, if you look at all the debates so far, yeah, you, you just you, you get your sound bites out, and then it's on to the next 407 candidates. Um, it'll be interesting to watch. I don't know. I personally have always liked Joe Biden as a person. He's nice. I don't want him to be president. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I respect him as a person. But, yeah, what I've seen is it seems like it's not the old Joe Biden, at least. Um, he and Bernie are going to go at each other's throats, I'm sure. Bernie's angry. His people are angry. Milwaukee. Bernie's still sharp, though. Like, Bernie's still with it. Yeah. Like, even though he had a heart attack, mentally, he's still with it. Yeah, he, he can is. put up a fight, and he's yeah. quick. Yeah. So him versus Biden should be a shootout mm-hmm. tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, this, this is going to be interesting. Be, this is going to be the best entertainment Yeah, I think we're probably going to live stream yeah. that and... Yeah, we're gonna yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna live go stream on, on Drinking that. Bros and commentate That's that awesome. underneath. I, I, I wonder really I wonder what the responsibility of the American public is to keep to make sure someone with dementia doesn't have their thumb on the nuclear button. For example, 
not that Nixon had dementia, but one night, this is, I don't know if you guys know the story or not, but Richard Nixon, when he was president one night, got fucking blackout drunk and ordered a nuclear strike on North Korea. And his staff, yeah. like, said, we're going to wait until tomorrow morning when he's when he wakes up. <laughs> we're going to give that a potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going uh, to shake this off, then, dick. Then when he woke up, it was like, you know, obviously we're not going to do that. But what if Biden becomes president he just doesn't wake up from his dementia? Yeah, but th- this is where, you know, I think there's, especially if it's something like a nuclear strike, I mean, there's layers of people that are going to be like, ah, I don't, that's why. Right, but you don't have to nuke a country to make, yeah, to, to fuck make up our economy, decision. for example. And that's why I think, you know, I think it's fair when people start talking, like asking this question, because you ultimately have to make a decision to vote for somebody. Yeah. And I think it's a fair question. You know, now I don't think, you know, Trump should or would run on that issue alone. But I think to have that in the in the discussion, I mean, it, it's fair. You got to make a decision, you're, and yeah. you're voting not just for somebody you agree with politically, but like who's going to be competent in the levers, like the most powerful position in the world. Yeah, but and that's a good point that you bring up when you start talking about competence. Is I think our biggest problem in politics is no one's held accountable at all. Like no one holds these guys. No one show, shows Feinstein and Pelosi, and then shows San Francisco yeah. and goes. You all failed. Here's all the stuff Grab you the said mayor. you were going to do. Grab the mayor. Here's what happened. Yeah, let's compare it fuck? real quick. You know what we need? You failed. We need a like, combine. You are a bad person for the job. We need a combine for Congress. A combine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Since, yeah. combine. Since yeah. sports is fucking canceled right now, we need a combine where they take the Wonderlick test. Everybody that fucking tries to get into Congress has to take a Wonderlick test. All the stats are public. You got to yeah. run the forty exactly, like like two twenty five like bench that. press. Because I, I tell you, everything is public. Vertical. But now yeah. you're not going to have yeah. a congressman in Atlanta that thinks an island's going to tip over. Yeah. yeah, if you have too many fucking boats show up to it. I don't understand why there isn't some kind of test of competency. C- cognitive, like you don't have to. The like only the ASVAB. The only qualification the con- you have to have. Needs an ASVAB. The only qualification <laughs> you have to have to run for Congress is to be a certain age. It's yeah, like twenty five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like, hey, sorry, uh, per your ASVAB scores, you can only run in the state of Georgia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We should make that con- congressional recruiters. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, uh. Spe- oh. Speaking of intelligence here, have you met AOC? And yes. how is she in real life? Actually, you know, I, I haven't had much interaction with her because it's funny because everybody talks, you know, AOC, and I'm like, She's a freshman, so I don't give much attention Axel to freshmen. Rod was talking when I was on a freshman, CNN. nobody paid attention to me, so that's right. kind of my theory, too. Axel Rod was on CNN uh, two days ago talking about how, how influential she is in the Democratic Party. I'm oh, like, she why? is. She why? is. She, is, yeah. she doesn't she has, know it's shit. fame, though. Yeah, yeah, she has more followers than yeah. Nancy Pelosi. She yep. has almost as many as, like, Donald Trump, maybe. I don't know but if they're it's not that in many, her but district. it's a lot. And, uh, yeah, but she... Which is the funny part. But I don't think she'll be in that district very long, do you? I don't... I New York's district changed. New York's district's changed. Because they don't like More her. than anybody else. They don't like her. Yeah, no, no. The Democrats, because she's driven the party. You in know, two. She's split uh, it in yeah. two. And, and she has put, like, there are really liberal Democrats that are being primaried by super duper lefties because they're not liberal enough. And, I mean, I hear these people come and talk to me like, you guys want to take AOC? I'm like, no, you can keep her. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, she has, she has, to her credit, whatever she struck, she has remade the Democratic Party. And that is why, more than anything, I think Trump gets reelected and we have a really good shot to take the majority back. It's, du- it's WWE. It is. Yeah. It, it is. is. Like yeah. AOC. Well, political all, theater. These are all, yeah, this yeah, is all I, theater. Jared, Jared has a theory that AOC is a plant from the Republicans. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah. That'd be really it's good. A great theory. I, I, it's a great think theory. Think about it. You, you go in early on, you're like, I want you to go full crazy and just like, we'll dive your party. Mm-hmm. You and know? then she eventually goes, ha ha, I believe in smaller government. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. What? Yeah. I love living off my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you guys. You got snow. I mean, that would Free be market. Got AOC. It's like the new punk. <laughs> that would be, a, that would be a, a pretty good strategy. That would be the best information operation campaign in the history Yeah, of, but we would have to be, humankind. have been that smart to do that. And I don't even give our side that good of credit. Exactly. Yeah. But we are. I'll tell you what's awesome awesome is we are learning as Republicans how to reach into different groups that we hadn't before. You know, you're seeing more people come on, you know, mm. podcasts and talk and mm. talk to an audience mm-hmm. that's not just watching CNN or Fox. Um, I think that's important. That's key. I think it, it's I, it's very totally key. key. Most, we just did most a crossover of, episode with Dan Crenshaw yeah, on Jordan yeah. Bros mm-hmm. and vice versa. 
on uh, hold these truths. So mm-hmm. yeah, and I, I think and, and most it was of our a good fans show. are sick of mainstream news. Yeah, yeah. that's that's one of the most common. Blur the lines. You, it's they, one they of the really most liked when yeah. we said that. It's yeah. one of the, the most common comments lines. we get on any piece of content that we put out. Is like, thanks for not being full of shit. Yeah, yeah. Basically. And that's where it's like you know because the one thing I the, I pride myself on is not the right word, but the one thing I've always tried to be in ten years is genuine. You know, mm-hmm. you have to obviously. Be careful what you say, how you say it, and you have to take that. It's, but I've always tried to just be open with who I am and not, like, re- sitting here reciting talking points and stuff. And I think the more we – and, you know, Dan does good at that. Uh, the more we do of that, we have – that's how you reach into the generation that's frankly going to take over after our parents and how we maintain conservative Republican majorities into the future, or at least people that – can think beyond you know two second sound bites they see on uh, whatever sh- thing. Uh, the the other thing to that though is is the way Trump utilizes it Twitter wise. Like it, it seems like he's the best at two second sound bites mm-hmm. and I mean just sucking up the media for twenty four hours. Yeah, it feels like everything That's around the game him. Now. That's, it's, it's, it feels like it is the new game. Well, he Correct. figured that's what it out. I was saying the the Pelosi rip of the State of the Union. Yeah, that's that was a strategy that point. Was, but it was so weak. that's all that was going to be talked about for two days. Yeah, right. Yeah. Do you remember Nancy uh, Pelosi? Nancy I, Pelosi. Oh yeah. Nancy Pelosi. I've, I've, got I've got a theory on. I've got a theory on Trump's strategy. I think it's like just a bulldozer. So you remember that scene in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas where uh, Hunter Thompson says, "Our only hope now is that anybody in the in the position to bring the hammer down on us." Couldn't possibly believe that we did all the fucked up shit that they're saying we did. Yeah. So we're probably pretty good. I think Trump just puts so much information out that he's yeah. like, oh, yeah. no one's going to be able to, like, they'll be bitching about these three things, but that'll be, you know, fucking two days old, which in this timeline is 10 years old. You Here's know? my hope on, on this. So I think the President Trump is kind of like what we needed at this moment. I just hope in the long term that this is not what the presidency is in perpetuity. You, want, you don't want Dwayne Alessandro Camacho yeah. from, <laughs> yeah. from Mountain Idiocracy? Dew. Yeah. yeah, Mountain, Mountain Dew. Dew Camacho. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think, WWE. And... I think, you know, he's stirred up. I mean, we see in these fights against the left, like the anger, like it's serious, personal, like mm. hate, anger. And... Uh, I think there's a benefit to that having been exposed now. I but just there's another thing to there's there's another thing to this. Like you look at all these viral videos and things like that out there, like I'm sorry, but I don't see them posting people like a bunch of guys that look like us walking up to a, a girl wearing a Bernie shirt and assaulting her. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I haven't seen see, any of I've those. I've never seen Not anybody one, no. comment on someone wearing a Hillary or a or, right. or a Biden. Like and I see those things out in public People walk by them like like they're completely ignored. Yet here we have hundreds, if not thousands, of videos of people up in arms about a MAGA hat or whatever. You gotta you gotta wonder at some point either a are these all staged? Because again, he's been walking around with that sweatshirt all day in Wilmington. Nobody said th- a thing. Yeah, it's it says Trump twenty forty. <laughs> Till yeah, death yeah, yeah. do us part. Till yeah, exactly. death do us so part. So it's like so. <laughs> No, are I'm, these outrages real, or are they being funded by, or fueled by something else? Well, I'll tell you, I, I you know, it is very real because I get, like, I, I recently had a parent tell me that their daughter in high school had written an article about or a, a paper about me and kind of my story and how I got into politics and something, and her teacher said that that she was going to fail it because. And I forget how she put it, but basically because I'm a Republican and mm-hmm. she needed to do a different subject. This is a public school. You know, when I went to ISU, I was the only Republican in all my political science classes, but it, they treated me with respect, right? That doesn't happen anymore. Now, if you're a Republican in class somewhere in a college, this higher learning, you know, they run you out of town. It's MAGA, incredible. redneck, racist, yeah, xenophobe. They make well, it used, to, it used decisions. to be like uh, you could hold, even the individual could hold differing opinions on yeah. one subject and that's that was a reasonable thing to do but now uh you very frequently if you just look on social media if you believe this you can go ahead fuck off yeah yeah, yeah that's Get, the attitude this is like Hate that you. yeah and it started with newt gingrich we talked about this at lunch that motherfucker man there were so many uh co- congressional majority leaders before him and the one that's most recent that dealt with the most divided congress was probably tip o'neill that we also yeah. talked about during the cold war they got a lot of shit done like they broke the back of the Soviet Union by passing bills, funding things, 
uh, supporting uh, uh, the Mujahideen, all sorts of stuff happened in the 80s that came directly from Congress. And now there's no fucking way we could get that done. Well, it's part of the battle is in – so in that time we had a common enemy that we all agreed on, right? Soviet Union communism. We should have that same common en- enemy right now in China, yeah, but you can't. But, but you not. can't. Yeah. Wow. And that's the thing. You come out and, and, and name the virus the Wuhan virus and you have – People in Congress seats calling that racist. It's like you can't even get them to say, hey, there is an illness being spread around the world. Can we all just solve this one problem? Well, that's racist. Yeah. Jesus. Like at this point, yeah, get them out. And I think it's. Yeah, and I think it's legit to talk about that because. Like I said at the beginning, for like two months, we didn't even know this existed in China right? or or a month. So they have some responsibility on why they didn't alert the rest of the world and they kept letting people fly is inevitably why this is here. Sure. Uh, but look, China should be held responsible for a lot of things. I mean, people bitch about us getting out of the Paris Treaty Accord mm-hmm. as well. And it's like, hey. Yeah, but they're responsible for 80 percent of the pollution on I know. Okay. Earth. Like there, like, there is fucked. so many things that we can't control that China does yeah. because mm-hmm. we're beholden to them also. For and look our, at media. For a lot yeah, of production, man. media, everything. They own four of the eight studios in Hollywood. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's nothing we can do at this point because they're also controlling a lot of our debt. Mm-hmm. So there is some tenderness, uh, you know, especially of when That's you it. talk about China of like, Hey man, they also do a lot of shit for us and pay for. But a lot China, of our shit, China's so. kind of like your shitbag friend. Like you know he's a piece of shit, yeah. but, he, but he's a predictable piece of shit. Yeah. As long as he stays predictable, you can work with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got one. Everybody's got one. We're all, all three of us are that guy, yeah. but for each, but for each other, <laughs> like we're all different types of piece of shit. Uh, I want to talk about something you said earlier that was interesting about uh, having the president become after Trump or yeah. whoever it's going to be. Because I think he's going to get reelected. So mm-hmm. we'll go 2024 on this mm-hmm. one uh, as more of a distinguished position rather than just spewing things on Twitter and everything around the world. Is that what you think eventually happens after the Trump and all this phase? Or is it like Dan and Jared said, where this is the new order and this is WWE and in political theater. And this is what we want to see. I, you know, I think, and, and I mean, I'm just, uh, it's obviously a guess, but my, what I think is this, the process is going to change. It's not going to just be, I mean, there'll be a lot of Twitter being used by every president now or whatever the next thing is. Um, the social media side will be very different. That's just, it's a generational change. It's something I'm like having to come to grips with of how different it is. And, uh, but I do think that eventually people are just going to kind of still demand a different kind of president that's calmer. I'm not saying that as a bad way against Trump, because again, I think he's serving a, a purpose at this moment. But I think people, I think everybody's engine's been on red line for a long time. Yeah. And they're exhausted. When's the last time we, we elected a president? That was like the previous president. Never. never like it's yeah. never yeah. happened. No. Like, yeah. like, and that's, that's kind of, yeah. Reagan he was wants a, some Re- form of change. Reagan yeah. was uh-huh. a Hollywood guy. Mm-hmm. He was a California guy. And Bush HW was not. Yeah. He was old school Washington. He was a fucking CIA guy. Pro- I mean, and then Clinton was the young. Clinton, yeah. Clinton was Playing saxophones. Clinton was yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. Then, yeah. and then W was like, didn't give a shit about anything really. Yeah. He was just like, I'm here for the party, bro. Let's get this done. It's the, always opposite. But he was it also is. he was yeah. also a cowboy. You know, he was like, fucking bring it on that whole bring yeah. it on thing. And then Obama was a total pussy. Yeah. You know, for the most part, not that actually his. Four, and then Trump was a direct opposite of him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like, so it's yeah. like um, yeah. Yeah. we bounce you, back and forth. You so also notice that change around the world where the people who were getting elected, Boris Johnson, all these other yeah. guys, were more like Trump. Yeah. The guy from Australia. He's more like Trump. Everything's kind of cyclical, I guess, in that yeah. way. Well, America really does drive the politics of the rest of the mm. world. You know, what happens here has a massive impact on the rest of the world. And uh, so I, you know, like Boris Johnson, I think probably wouldn't have happened without Donald Trump's No election. fucking no way. And, uh, no way. Yeah. Because he would still just, be scream, screaming in the House of Commons right now. Yeah. There's no way he would have been elected yep. prime minister. And he's going to be good. Way. I mean, he's, he's the only guy that, could, that got England through Brexit. Yeah, and everything's okay right now. Yeah, I mean, now. look. Here's, yeah. here's yeah. by fine. the way, here's the deal with Brexit: the people voted for it. Yeah, you got to get it done somehow, and he was the guy to get it done, like you said. Like and he they was just the guy. shed one whole extra layer of giant bureaucracy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's like having a two DMVs and then getting rid of one, and now only like that would be fantastic. If we can get rid of all of them, that'd, that'd be, be great. Fantastic. Yeah, gun to head. Who wins twenty twenty four? Uh. 
Uh, Nikki Haley or Tim Scott? I said Nikki Haley on I'd this show. I'd say one of the two. Come yeah. on, Tim, I, I think Tim Scott's too boring. I do too. But uh, boring maybe shit. after Trump, that makes sense. I know Tim really well, and I just know his 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 story. He's awesome. He has he's not expressed any interest. So I'd say Nikki Haley today, but it'll he all was change. a midterm appointment, right? It will all change. Uh, his, yes. first, his first time, mm-hmm. I said Nikki Haley on this show about yeah. a year ago. I think yeah. Nikki Haley is probably yeah. going to be a, It'd be good. a Veep candidate in twenty four. Ah, look, we'll there's see. a there's a, a nasty rumor that I've spread on this show that uh, uh, if Shit. Biden picks somebody, you know, like um, uh, like a Kamala Harris or a, yeah. or a Booker, right? Yeah. And he's having trouble in those polls trying to get the uh, uh, middle class white women. The mom vote yeah. out that he swaps out Pence for Nikki Haley on the day of the d- Democratic speech. There's a lot of people talking about that. Yeah, I, you that started. My... You started a. You started a trend. I feel like I have every. My wife. Oh, said you I think was Trump insane. swaps Pence? Correct. Yeah, and I think on get, the day he gives Pence a cabinet position of some sort. Probably. Yep. I'll yeah. take the opposite and, end and of that. Pence, Pence would. Okay. Have, Pence but would absolutely you, do it. If it's right, you're going to look like you know you're going to look a hero. Genius. Yeah, a hero. And if I'm right, people are just going to be like, oh yeah, he, yeah. So, yeah, he was. Uh, in, he's in Congress. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. take big risks. That's good. I like it. What's your? What do you? What do you? What do you say? Like, like with Biden, who does he choose? You think? I, you know, I, I think Corey it's. Booker. I think it's going to be. A, be I actually Booker. kind of would say it might be the who's the lady that ran from Minnesota. Oh, Klobuchar. 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 Yeah. That's I too wouldn't white. Be she's too white. Yeah, and it's also she's too moderate too, and he's going to be seen. Although as a Biden's got a good percentage of the black vote, he needs a Latino vote in Texas to to win because I think the Democrats can win Texas in twenty twenty. But here's been always the misnomers. Everybody bro. thinks a VP can bring. A certain demographic, or a certain, and it's they only never happened do, twice in modern right. Elections, the thing yeah. that the the reason a VP was great, a Pence was great for Trump, is Trump was able, you know, for the kind of traditional conservatives to say, "Hey, look, he's with me. I'm listening to him on these issues that are important to you." Because you know, obviously, Trump was not a social conservative in the past, yeah. And that was a really good pick for. He's him. also not religious, and Pence right. is very religious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that for him was a good pick, but usually a VP. Everybody thinks it's going to make a big difference, and I like, like it Paul does. Ryan. Yeah, well, Paul, Paul. Paul would have been actually a good president. He's smart. He's yeah. smart as fuck. Yeah. He's boring. He's a bro- yeah. he, He's boring. He's got a widow's peak. Boring yeah. guy. He's got a guy. Terrible peak. speaker. Uh-huh. Yeah. Have we ever had a president with a widow's peak? Mm. I'm sure somewhere Orphan. probably before pictures. Wasn't James, <laughs> Ma- wasn't James Madison like yeah. five foot? I feel four like an Orphan. Adams might have had one. You know, I always think about. I always play this game like I'm going to name somebody that did you ever know this was a president? And I forget who I. It's because everybody's like, oh, Millard Fillmore, you know. But everybody thinks of Millard Fillmore because you know he's just the guy you never think of as president. Sure. But th- if you go through the list of presidents, there's always somebody, and you're like, oh yeah, like Grover Cleveland's one, where you're like, yeah, I guess he was a president. Yeah. You never think of him. How would you like to be that guy in history? Well, he was the guy who created this, the Cleveland Steamers. So yeah, um, <laughs> around here, he's number one in my eyes. Yeah. James well, Madison was go. five foot four, ninety eight pounds. He was the president of the United States. Days before wow, television. Gosh, that right. was a, yeah. that was a he was a hipster. Yeah, and people uh, in Cleveland. Yeah, he wore skinny jeans. Yeah, people in Cleveland are still doing steamers to this day. So, oh yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, it we're really day, proud yeah. of everything they're doing. Yeah. Uh, now's the point where we get to some sponsors uh, on this show. First and foremost, talking about GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Look, kids, they know the coronavirus is upon us. That's why they're shipping you your mattresses for twenty percent off and free pillows. They come pre wrapped. All you have to do is drag them shits up to your bedroom, unpack it, boom. Two hours later, you're ready to make love to your Walmart. Yeah, you also might want to invest in that uh, mattress protector in case you do have the coronavirus. You can wash that bitch off. You can wash it. It's not going to affect the mattress. Also, there's 50% off the adjustable bases. And let's face it. If your kids are out of school like mine are for the next two weeks, you're going to put that remote all the way up, dude, and watch everything you possibly can on Netflix or subscribe to the show on YouTube, Drinking Bros Podcast. we got three shows coming at you uh, every day of the week. We're going every day of the week as long as this bullshit lasts. Oh, we're going we decided We're going hard. We're going to even go tomorrow night. We're going to go live. We're going tomorrow night. We're going every night this week. We're doing it week. live. We're, yeah. having, a, we're having a We'll do it live. Full we'll blown it live. TV show. Yeah, yeah. Tuesday night, Dan and I are watching a movie together live with you. Oh, we should all do Range 15. Old as Yeller. Well here. Uh, oh, are you watching Old Yeller together? <laughs> no, we're not watching Old Yeller. Oh, we can do Range 15. Yeah, Range 15. It would be awesome. Wait. No, we've never commentated that. No. We've never commentated that. You guys we, should. We had this. Oh, do it. I will watch 
watching 100 yeah, 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 if you yeah, commented. Yeah. We had this idea, too, for Cats, but we'll get into that on a different show. On a different show. Cats? Not, not yeah. this one. We'll, a, we'll, we'll, cat cat later. a congressman cannot be Yeah, he keep it a little more We word. can't be involved in this no. one. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. As always, the 36-month page to go program, no interest, applies with all the deals that I just mentioned. No excuse. Coronavirus free. Next up, we got expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Protect your digital butthole. Since you are home and you're ordering everything to your house and you're not leaving because you're afraid of the air, you're afraid of Wuhan, got you all in check. Uh, Protect every computer you have in your house iPhones, laptops, iPads, everything. It's a seamless app that runs in the background of your computer, protects you from everything uh, that people are trying to steal from you, your passwords, your bank accounts, all that bullshit. Also, if you're still going to work, it'll beat every firewall, and you can watch a pornography. Uh, I used to say March Madness, but that's been canceled. You can't watch any sporting events, so it's straight Pornhub, son. Uh, They're not a sponsor, but they should be. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Today, $7 a month. You get three free uh, just for being a drinking bros listener at expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Last but not least, this is a new one. Speaking of not having to leave your house. Postmates. Do you notice a theme here, kids? I All used it today. Yes. I used it today. I use it every day. I every had day. Taco Bell delivered to me at the <laughs> FBO while waiting for Mr. Adam. <laughs> if you've not had Postmates, you've definitely heard of it. They ship everything to your house. Wine, Magnum condoms, fucking Advil. You name it, they will ship it to your house. They also, will find it food from within restaurants. An hour. And... Well, food for you, Dan. Uh, you get the boring shit. I get the fun stuff. Lube. Magnums. Um, can't say that enough. Magnum condoms. They barely fit, but I need something. And that is the only thing the government's willing to make these days. Go to Postmates. If you are new to it, hopefully you are, type in the promo code Drinking Bros. You get $100 of free shit sent to you. That includes liquor. That includes lube. That includes condom. Anything you want. $100 for free. Promo code Drinking Bros. All you have to do, download the Postmates app on your phone and order anything you want to your house. Inc- toilet paper, whatever it is you're missing in your life. Go to Postmates. Download the app. Promo code Drinking Bros. $100 worth of free stuff shipped directly to you. We've been working on this one for a while. And now is the best time in the world. Holy is, shit. Yeah. Can you They're believe right that? Right on time. My girl says that uh, having sex with a condom on doesn't count. Oh. It's like washing your hands with gloves on. Who? Goddamn right. We'll get into that off camera. We will. <laughs> We will. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you pulled that shit on us a week ago, though. You I know. You did. <laughs> I did. You did. I did. Bag. Uh, yeah. Well, your wife has a big announcement to make because it's her fault. Does she really? She does. Do Wait. I even I know what we're talking about? Yes, you do. Okay. All right. You already know what. Whenever we're you talking say about. my wife, I get worried, and then it's just like, all right, uh, why? Great. What's going to happen? He's worried. She's going to get pregnant worried, again. Yeah, we have another kid, and, I'm, yeah. and I don't know. And then I'll get on the show, and it's like, congratulations, it's a third. And I'm yeah. Like, oh yes, we do have a, we do have a pact that I get to announce your next baby on the show. We're going to have one. We're going to do my pullout game is real strong. Dude. <laughs> we're going to do the one. the worst gender reveal you've ever By seen. By the way, oh, sure. I'll, I'll give both of you a good a good one right here because uh, we're uh, we're starting a new troll. Evan Evan essentially is going to be telling Ed, his father, yep. uh-huh. that um, at his funeral he's going to do an open casket and dress him in a dress and mm. put lipstick on him. He can't stop us from <laughs> exactly. doing it. Exactly. <laughs> can't stop anybody from doing he that. He can't. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, mm. oh yeah. You That's know, amazing. You, that you know Ed is going to go through Ed's the, really the old. Roof. So Evan, yeah. Evan from time to time when they're out in public will walk up and grab, like interlock his fingers with Ed's h- fingers. His oh, hands. like yeah, a forced yeah. handhold. Yeah, yeah, I like oh, that a yeah. lot. Kiss his dad on the lips. I like just, that a lot, that too. That was so funny when we thought yeah. of it. Like, <laughs> just open casket while Evan's delivering the eulogy. Oh, and God. just in a dress. He'll freak a out. A pinwheel and some lipstick. <laughs> he will like, freak that's out. that's how you bury your friend <laughs> yeah. or your dad. That'd be the best. Wouldn't it? <laughs> Sorry about it. And then you take pictures. They're not going to yeah. know, though. They're yeah, gonna that's. Know. You're not going to know. Uh, hey, when you're in Congress, do you watch the debates uh, the same as everybody else does? Uh, uh, well, most people do. I don't. They bored me, so no. But not to know what's going on in the world and have something to talk about. Like, yeah. I'm sure when you get to, to D.C., everybody's talking about it the next day because I heard it's a, yeah, a lot that's like true. Hollywood and it's like high school. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, yeah, so I get, I'll get get like the kind of rundown. 
all the Republican debates I watched, like in 16, because it was they were fun and everything. The Democrats, I just like they drive me nuts watching them. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll get like kind of the rundown of what happened, and then when people start like super debate talking, I'm just kind of like, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm like it's funny because now I've been in 10 years, so I'm kind of the guy. That like like the old sergeant, you know, that's just kind of like not doesn't get emotional about well, things. Well, yeah, because like, like you uh, hear, yeah. I I imagine at that point, like when you hear somebody say, "Oh, we're gonna do the college forgiveness thing," you're just like, that "Here we never, go again." That would never yeah. pass. That would yeah. never pass in yeah. a million years. We'll pass it out of like, here, and then it dies in yeah, the sun. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So like, yeah. Yeah. you just know like what goes into it. So when you hear you someone, invest your emotional like. Juice in the, the not that emotional like stuff juice. That can get, yeah. Emotional yeah. juice. Yep. I've got I'm like they're gonna the run time. with that one. Yep. Your Ugh. emotional energy. Yeah. Is I, such. Look, I, I used my emotional juice. juice in the bat show the other night with I, my wife. I, I would say I didn't. Uh, about forty to sixty percent of the time, somebody says the word energy to me, I had to stop listening because yeah. it, everybody's a fucking hippie now. Like oh, energy is. Th- right. This had a really, this had a really good or, energy. I'm like, oh, here's what I hate really? is when they talk about being in like a certain place, a place like uh-huh. oh, a space. Uh, that's a beautiful it's, space uh, you have. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna do. Or, or they're like, I'm in a better like space in my life, or I've created a, just a wonderful, peaceful space. I hate uh, space. Uh, I've never had space. You got richer and bought a new house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I just no, but it's like an emotional space that they're in. I don't. Oh, that's, yeah. That just drives me nuts. I'm done with that. Your wife said that. Yeah. No, she doesn't. She's never Good. said space. No, she's a Republican. Good. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, a Republican. I was, was going to ask that before we went on <laughs> yeah. air. You said you just got married a month ago. Yeah. Was that a prereq for you of like, hey man, I've got to marry a Republican? Uh it's it's helpful. She's amazing. So like, she checks all the boxes. But if she said I'm a Democrat, I would still marry her because she's awesome. But we just what would if she never said she voted for Hillary. Well, you know, <laughs> we just would not talk about yeah. that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we would not. Yeah. But thankfully. Yeah. She's a Republican just like me. Yeah, because we were talking I'm about lucky. James Carville. Um, mm-hmm. Carville married, you know, yeah. a hardcore Republican. And yeah. It's just not like him. Yeah, he but hardcore Republican in the ever. 70s is not. Yeah, that's hard, true. I like mean, the, that, they were both like kind of centrist. He's like center like Because that was like, yeah. you know, the Clinton, yep. you know. But now nah, she's awesome. And what, what's cool is then when you come home and I can kind of complain about work or talk about work, she can obviously in a very educated way it. talk about it. Yeah, yeah educate and like talk about it. And so it's cool. Understand. It's like, oh, oh yeah. that sounds horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I couldn't do it, by the way. Hashtag, no, hashtag blessed. Exactly. Yeah, hashtag, hashtag blessed. blessed. How did you and Jared meet? Um, cause you're, you, were oh, in, you, you served. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I knew I've been watching all you're the, still in the reserves, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. I still fly. It's cool. I'm a pilot. If you didn't know that, uh, you can tell yeah. by my hair. I mean, but, I tell yeah. 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 Thank Look you. Who's waiting Thank for you. Top Gun yeah. to come out. There uh-huh. it is. Uh-huh. I want We're all going together, by the way. Totally. Yeah. 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 It'll be emotional. Can but, we all, yeah. can we wear leather jackets and aviators? Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think, we, should, I think we yeah. should all get, let's just pin it now. We're all getting together for the, the release yeah. of Top yeah. Gun. Yeah. Let's play, yes. volley, let's yeah. play volleyball out in the parking in lot. In the first. parking yes. lot. Yes. I think yes. Miles, Miles could get you tickets to the Shirtless in jeans. I'm in. I'm oh, in. Yeah, 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 but I can't bring 10 friends. You can't, but take him. You guys, both are, both of you were Air Force. Mm-hmm. Oh, we could go mm-hmm. in uniform. Yeah, go. Yeah. Both you guys. Yeah. Go take them. Well, I, I won't be offended by it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, did you guys just meet through? Yeah. Through so watching I, videos. I or basic, Black Rifle. I've been watching all the you know kind of the funny stuff they're doing, right? And uh, and it's you know how to work out as an operator or that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And and then Black. I actually have a Black Rifle coffee bag on my desk i've had like i think since it basically opened somebody came back and like hey these guys etc and so i had it on my desk just because i thought it was cool and uh and then i watched range 15 and i watched it so uh leroy petrie is my buddy i met him on the bush campaign when he was doing yeah he's awesome he was doing uh some you know as medal honor guys endorsed jeb and uh he had either just done the movie or was going to do it Mm -hmm. and he was explaining like what was going to happen and i'm like that's hilarious and that sounds like it's going to be exactly the kind of military humor that we have and uh and then i had just never watched it i I think i'd forgotten a couple times i thought of it and then i saw it like six months ago or a year ago and it was awesome and somehow in that process, I had followed him on Instagram and then just sent something. And he's the people guy that likes to. He know. is. And look, for, for everybody at home, man, uh, Jared Taylor invented Range 15. That was his brainchild. Oh, yeah. That's cool. He, he fuck. He Zone, started, f- Zone 15, it was originally Zone called. 15. Yeah, I've got the original called. script on my hard drive. Still. Yeah, it started Article 15. Black Rifle Coffee That's would bad. not exist without Jared Taylor. Yeah. And I don't think you get enough credit for that. Um, you, you were the one who put all of us together. 
Drinking Bros. He invented yeah, that, the group no, Drinking I mean, Bros it, online. It goes, it goes back to people, everybody, everybody in this team brought the perfect ideas at the perfect time. They did, but the you one know, common factor we all have is the one who put everyone together was Jared Taylor. And I think that is lost on everybody a lot. And uh, I just had this discussion with somebody else. And I was like, man, it is amazing to see what one person or how many people he is connected. And the proudest I've ever been of you was when I was in Bernie, Texas last week in a Black Rifle Coffee brick and mortar shop. Hmm. All these people were, were not only amped to be there and the coffee was amazing. Starbucks is shit, by the way. Um, <laughs> and literally through, through the next door over, you could buy guns, you could drink coffee, Everyone was happy to be there, and it was a huge corner shop. And it was literally because Jared decided to pick up the phone, put a bunch of people together, and make all of this happen. And I turned to you during the middle of it, and I go, hey, man, I'm really proud of you. And I, I, I don't know if you thought I was fucking with you or what, but I was like, this is amazing. Like, you helped create all of this. So, Well, I was telling him, you know, and not to, not to overstate it, but – one of the things I've I've thought about as I've as I've kind of pondered, you know, I guess the future of politics is like our generation and younger, uh, we're missing kind of like good conservative fun voices, you know, and I think our the the group of us veterans is kind of leading that charge to bring everybody together. To kind of be that next generation, it kind of it's not just about the politics, but I think it's I mean, we have to mold to that. that attitude back. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. That attitude was lost, I believe, with this with with the popularity of the gaming generation, mm -hmm. where you know kids were raised on Xboxes. Now mm -hmm. they're not they're not going you know to do sports every Friday, Saturday, Sunday with their dad. They're not they're not yeah. you know all these things that that we grew up with that gave us this attitude of you had to earn everything you had to we had to go to tryouts to get on the baseball team we had yeah. to go to tryouts to get on the football team we did all that stuff is being removed now yeah. like where it's like oh well that's unfair yeah wait what <laughs> well and you appreciate <laughs> friends too right that's like even being lost people like knowing like what it's like to have a real buddy like somebody mm. that you you know a dude that you love you know but somebody that you're close to and and that's what, like, I think our generation is going to be the ones that take all that back. Yeah, I don't know if people outside of, uh, and I hate, I'm not not to compare the two, but veterans and frat people understand yeah. that level of connection. Because you have to go through Teams. something yeah. extremely stressful in a small group of people yeah. to develop relationships like that. And it's not, look, the the development part is not that great. It sucks kind of, mm -hmm. but the result of it is great. Well, so it's like, I don't, how do you, I don't know if you can inorganically reproduce something like that. So it, it's just like, it, it makes it more important. Like it makes it incumbent upon us to like talk about that shit. And like the suppression of humor, right? So totally inappropriate humor is ev the only thing we talked about when we were overseas, when I was in the war, it was, how inappropriate can we be? Because it's yeah. funny. We didn't mm -hmm. actually mean it, but it's funny. And this kind of new, you can't say anything ever inappropriate. You can't hurt anybody's feelings. Mm -hmm. It's kind of taken, it's tried to rip that away. And that's where like people that know comedy, you know, are going to bring that back. They're going to be the ones that save this. And that's where, you know, this show, frankly, is doing a great job of serious stuff and being funny about it. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. But in, in the you know the, the age of participation trophies, yeah. it gets tougher and tougher and tougher. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I wasn't psyched when, you know, my, my kid's five. He won a second place trophy in the thing. And they were like, oh, wait, the, the, the award ceremony is coming up. And I was like, why? We lost. I don't want this fucking trophy. Like this one right here my on, kid the, sucks. on the desk. This was first place for Ross Patterson. Like, I won this. The reason this trophy's up, it was first place. I didn't get a second place trophy. It was first place. And that's the way it should be. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no, no. Now you've got you've all got the other kids sports clubs to that, win first place. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't get they a don't trophy. They don't keep score now. Like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's just again like like people people have this this idea that this is somehow going to make our our children mentally stronger. But no, that's not how. It's not how life works. No, it's, ga it's, it's game not, theory. Everybody in that interview room is not just getting a job. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why people are stressed because then when they fail in real life, they've never dealt with they've failure never on the dealt baseball with field. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's, 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 it is too full, but it's like it's, ga it's basic game theory, right? Like it's 
if for those of you who don't understand mathematics, mm-hmm. it's it's cap. That's what is capitalism is. It's game theory. You throw all the pieces on the board and let them play out how they oh, play yeah. out, right? Yeah. And that there's a there's a, uh, a a modality of communication between people there that pretty much results in everybody trying to be something. Yeah, right. And it works. And, but trying is the operative word. So even with Nash equilibrium theory, which is a little more, in my opinion, on the socialist end, like you. Everybody's still trying. You're you're aiming towards a goal at some point, not just like I think. You know, I exist, so I deserve food, water, and shelter. You you don't deserve shit, motherfucker. Like we fought for that. Mm -hmm. Not not we as like soldiers or whatever airmen, but like we as human beings have fought for that over the years. Like every ounce of comfort you have is born on the back of somebody who bled for that right. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Now we're just at this point where technology and everything is is spoiling us yeah you, to, to eat you don't have to learn how to hunt anymore yeah you know yeah. to be warm you don't have to learn how to how to harvest yeah. wood and make a fire like it's 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 just this now we, it's yeah. it's it's, like, in, it's interesting how we <laughs> we assume that something that's been bought by the blood of our ancestors to us is now a right but See, even but, that but uh, no go ahead well, I, don't, I was gonna say i don't believe this in morning human, like human rights i saw a I don't perfect example that. I saw I, I saw one of the groups that we're in. Some some dude posted, you know, the you know, healthcare for all is a is a human right. And the response I gave was no, absolutely not. I'm like because break this down from an individual level that donated tens of thousands of mm-hmm. hours of their life to studying and school and they paid for that mm-hmm. by working and doing and getting scholarships and doing extra jobs and then the on the job training that it took and all this time mm-hmm. for you to learn medicine and now i just supposed to give it to you be, 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 for free for free yeah, because yeah, yeah. why yeah. No, well, that's not how this works. And that's where <laughs> this kind of moment we're in with the virus, which is serious. Uh, but I think, you know, when you're running out of toilet paper and the stores are being run on, maybe there will be coming out of this kind of a, a bit of appreciation for what goes into making society last. Mm. That you don't always get to just assume that you're going to go somewhere and get whatever you want. I mean, right. not that this is a good thing, but at the end, maybe we can look at this and say, I don't know, maybe there's a little more appreciation for what we well, have. Well, look, for there's no nobody out there, Democrat, the furthest left person. I've, I haven't heard anybody dissent on injecting money into Wall Street. And uh, I, the only dissent I've heard regarding the, uh, the uh, payroll tax cut is from the right. Yeah, deficit. Because okay. they're worried about, you know, setting Massive. a bad precedent and, you know, keeping on more deficit. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it's interesting to see when crises happen, how people change like like yeah. very quickly. Yeah, like totally. I, there was a meme I posted this morning, and it was like, you don't hear a whole lot of anti-vaxxers talking right now, do you? Yeah, that's no, true. No, you definitely don't. <laughs> that is true. Definitely don't. Yeah. Now they're pro. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, at, at a but, long term here, how long do you think until this is over and we, we've passed it? As a nation, I think you know. I think the next week is going to be especially telling. I think we're going to probably start getting back to normal in April. That's kind of my feeling. Okay, uh, and you know it could be a little longer, but the more we take this seriously, I think April. But this will always kind of be there because it might go dormant in the summer and then come back in September. But I, my hope is, and what I have a feeling is that we're going to find out there was a vaccine that was found a lot faster than we thought. Trump has done some great things by speeding up the FDA process, yep. which has been huge. You yeah. know, they had that test that was in 24 hours created. So, yeah, and I don't hear anybody talking about what he did about uh, uh, lifting the restrictions for medical providers to provide services across state borders. That's yeah. a big deal. Yep, it is, and it could set precedents that we yeah. may be in, put into law when this yeah. is over. For Washington State, like for see. example, has 31 of the 41 deaths that have happened in the United States. So they're experiencing the coronavirus way worse than anybody else. And the biggest concern, from my understanding, about the coronavirus is putting too much stress on our hospital system. Yeah, that's that's And it, yeah. so if, if Washington State is an isolated event, yeah, technically their hospital system might get fucked over, but a state that has no cases can yeah. send doctors there or use them to prescribe people or evaluate yeah. people or whatever. Like, we're a country. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's the whole issue because... You know, if you get this, even if you're complicated, if you get intense medical care, you're probably going to be okay, which is why we have better survivability rates yeah. here. Mm-hmm. It's when that system is overwhelmed. And yeah, I don't think they have great medical concern. care in Wuhan, China. No, yeah. No. No. So us no. basing they have the mortality rate. Incinerators. They have 40. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 40, 40 incinerators there. Yeah. 
Yeah. So well, when you look at Iran, I mean, remember they did the herd theory where they, they said everybody graves. gets sick so that we're all immune. Yeah. And that's why you have these mass graves because all of a sudden they overwhelm their own system. And, right. you know, that's, and now basically their entire leadership's dead too. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what I heard last night, by the way, was uh, that Canada had isolated the virus. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, they were working on a, a possible vaccine within 30 days. Yeah. Do you get that type of information as well? Or are you just reading it through the media? Like yeah, the mostly through the media. You know, there's people that have some people on the healthcare committees and stuff making these decisions. They'll probably get a little better. Like, I get some better stuff on foreign policy on my committee. Mm-hmm. But uh, for the most part, it's what I'm reading. But I'll tell you, I think, you know, and I also read that there's a DOD company that thinks they have a breakthrough on this. So there's a lot of attention. And we have to incentivize that profit wise. You know, the mm-hmm. Democrats will say, all these companies should be working on it for no profit. No, no. right? You, no. Yeah. You have to have a profit. And that's where the government can come in, you know, and help provide kind of that incentive. And mm. they have. And I think we're going to get there fast, you know. But this I is mean, a look relatively at SpaceX. new time in history. Look at yeah, SpaceX. Look at, yeah. Yeah. We're probably going to get to Mars 20 years, like like literally colonize Mars, 20 to 50 years earlier than we would have as a, as a species. Yeah, some just, because private, yeah. just because private, yeah. just because private industry, Musk, and, and yeah. look at what's going Coming on. Musk up. Look at look at what's going on in the NBA now. Already, Mark Cuban, who's probably the most front facing owner in the NBA, has come out and said, "Hey, we as private business owners need to take care of our people, not yeah. the government." Yeah. So, like well, four NBA players have already donated. Money yeah. like, to to the staff to the staff to, to the staff yeah. that works that, inside the arena. There's no, be there's no one more generous days, yeah. on earth than the American public. Absolutely, you know the CEO Forget of Delta about the government. said, "Look, we're going to have to cut capacity by X amount. I'm giving up my salary for all of this year, mm-hmm. yeah. which is big." And uh, and you know when it comes to charity, it's not because of the tax. Americans are the most generous yep. people, I've made that and point it's not ten just Americans; yeah. it's conservatives. It's conservatives because. Like I said, what we don't do a good job of, but this is true, is we actually are compassionate about people. 30 miles north of where I live, you know this area, you're more likely to get shot than you are in Kandahar, Afghanistan. And it's 30 miles north of where I live. Some of the south side of Chicago. Yeah. yeah. There's a reason and they a call kid, it Chirac. Right. Yeah. yeah. And a kid born into that should have the same opportunity as a kid born. Well, if you're born in Peoria, you're in trouble. But a kid born <laughs> in Bloomington, you know, or a kid yeah. born in San Antonio. But you start with a foot behind. And what we want to say is we want to give you an opportunity to do better. And the Democrats say we're going to give you a check. You're going to still be poor, and we're going to take away your incentive to be better. So what's the role of government in saying what Mark Cuban's doing should be law or it should, we should just try to encourage it. Like, cause there's, there's passive ways to do it through tax breaks and all sorts yeah. of other ways. Like, Hey, if you're, if, if, if some kind of situation happens, it displaces workers, whether it's an event or, or it's uh, creative destruction or whatever it happens to be. If the owner of the business gets incentivized to take care of people and, and transition into what may like, look, the more and more AI advances, we may be looking at a universal basic income. At some yeah, point, I mean it's right? gonna get weird. Yeah, so be, we, we don't yeah. we don't know in fifty, sixty years we don't know what's gonna happen. We'll be dead by then. Yeah, for yeah. sure we will. But Five, you don't write years. laws for yourself. <laughs> you write laws for the people that come after you. So it's like, well, I think this like the government plays a role in incentivizing. You know, the government has to come in with a hammer on some things. You know, especially on like defense and infrastructure. That's an important role. But um, if you think about it, think of it when you've given somebody a gift. Maybe you wrote them a check for 500 bucks because they were like down and out. Something was happening. Remember how good that feels inside to do yeah. that? Mm-hmm. Now imagine if I came to you and said, give me $500 so I can give that to her. You're going to resent it. So where you actually, when you incentivize people to do good things mm-hmm. instead of force them to do good things, they're more likely to do more and more good things because you get that internal good feeling. There are a couple it. events. So the, the uh, tsunamis. Yeah. And then the earthquake in Haiti. Yep. Yeah. The American, private American citizens gave more to those two events than any government, any organization combined. Which yeah. were other countries and not our own. So, yeah. And which yeah. Is and oh, by the way, you we know. Do it all the time. What else has America contributed to the world? You know, electricity, mm-hmm. the light bulb, hot well, dogs, airplanes. Nikola Tesla Jesus hot wasn't. dogs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jesus yeah. is white, blue yeah. eye. Yep, blonde white, hair. blue eye, blonde hair. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, but you think <laughs> about. Airplanes. Perfect English, fluent English. Airplanes. Pilots, for sure. Yes. Pilots. Pilots, Pilots exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Up to electricity. Electricity. Yeah. Yeah. electricity. Nikola Tesla may have a claim to that. I mean, it's. You know. yeah, he's an American. Yeah. Y'all are. He, he yeah, moved are. here. Um, so. No, but you. I always revert back to Pangea. Uh, we're all one, you know. 
from a just, a single just saying. He moves every, every time I go outside the country, I still see light bulbs. Yeah, Pangea, brother. That's true. French fries. <laughs> and they they got airplanes. That's right. Hamburgers. Yeah. Corn dogs. Oh, if you look at like World War II, I mean, we, you know, Japan and Germany was destroyed. We had to rebuild the whole like manufacturing. Yeah, the plan, yeah. And it all like the United States became a manufacturing powerhouse because somebody had to manufacture things. Everybody else's capacity to do it was destroyed. And it all came here. And then in the process, we gave money, you know, to the Germans and the and the Japanese. We get way more out of that than we ever invested. And Japanese now. are pretty nice to us. I yeah. always say that when my friends tell me they're mad. Oh, we've, I'm never gonna. I'm never talking to that person again. I'm like, yeah, Japan talks to us. And we've we never been them. at war. <laughs> <laughs> we've never. We've never been to war with a country that has a McDonald's in it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That is yeah. that is absolutely true. And you look at like Jeez. Vietnam. I so I I used to travel with McCain some, and uh, he told me once. He goes, "I am more popular in Vietnam and more known in Vietnam than I am in Arizona." And he's like, because for whatever reason they and he asked like some Vietnamese guy once, "Why do you guys like us? We were just at war with you." And he goes, "Yeah, but you guys left. <laughs> like everybody else, you know, stayed forever." The, yeah. yeah, and so, but you that's that's what America is. We can. You know, we have made a huge difference in the world. All you do is look at South Korea and North Korea. Yeah. You know, be proud of who we are. We can't be ashamed of it. Exactly. I, I, I would say the one thing that you could pull out of this that's hopeful out of this, this virus is this is the first time I've seen all of the countries working together to yeah. find a common goal, which is to well, stop except for, it. Except for China. Yeah, like they they, kinda they, held they've been cock blocking. They've been they don't give us real data and shit like that. Like I who, guess they started sending scientists out, but yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Jack so. Ma sent what five hundred uh, testing kits? Yeah, and, uh, and five hundred million, five hundred yeah, thousand, five hundred thousand yeah. that are that are going to be arriving here on Monday. Uh, he knows where the money's yeah, coming he from. Knows for he's smart, yeah, he, he, he knows owns he, yeah. he owns Alibaba. He also owns half of the real estate in the Bay Area. So yeah. he does. Yeah, good for yeah. him. He does. At uh, this point in the show, we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you uh, become the man you are today. Who would you like to give that to, Adam? Uh, can I can I say my dad? I'll say yes, my dad. Absolutely. It's so great. here's why. Because so my dad actually ran for a few years a homeless shelter in Peoria, Southside Mission. Really? Yeah. That's where you. And then he <laughs> lived. I lived in East Peoria in the for shelter. three years. Okay. So, and then uh, and then we moved to Bloomington. And he ran Home Sweet Home Mission. My dad's a really smart guy. He's a conservative Republican and, and, and led kind of these non-for-profits because he just had a passion for it. And he taught me, like, how to be a compassionate conservative in a real way. And, and that's what I think is going to save our party in the long term. So he's been my inspiration. My mom's obviously awesome. Uh, but my dad, in terms of, like, this career and everything, I'd give it to him. That's awesome. Yeah. Cheers. He doesn't Amazing. drink, Cheers. though. So. What's his name? Russ. Russ. Russ there we go. Yeah, Russ. He's awesome. It's a strong name. Also, it is. He's, got yes. a big, he's got a big announcement, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was given a position no. today. God damn <laughs> both of you. I God. I have named I have named Jared Taylor as my attaché. Ah. Uh-huh. I'm an attaché. What is that for the yeah. layman? A briefcase. Out there? Yeah, it's, it's Leather briefcase. No, 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 it's no, a, no. It's just, yeah, there's a lot. It's, it's a big a job. I've read into it on Monday. I'm getting my business cards. It's in it's French, so you know it's important. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You, you going to DC? Yeah. 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 I'll be there. I'll be there once a month yeah. to do my duties. To do a tache. Great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna show up in a suit with a laminate card that I made. Like, because, mm-hmm. you know, I could Photoshop pretty much anything. Yeah. That way, so all the staffers are like, who the who is like, this? That is my attache. Like, you, you've been oh, on the Senate floor before, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the outfit he was wearing? No. Boy. I'd be embarrassed. He was wearing multi-cam pants, I think. <laughs> yep. Yep. Looked like he was going duck hunting in Nothing about two hours. Nothing but class. Yeah. Nothing but yeah. class. Best, that was the best comment. When you have to hit the Senate floor, but have to, be, have duck to, hunting. Get, have to go duck hunting. Two hours later. Two hours later. Find you a man who can do both. Uh, <laughs> and then he lamented the decline of polite politics in his duck pants. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you're running on the 2020 ticket yeah. uh name tell to everybody your district um and how people can help out yeah look thanks it's uh illinois 16th district so it basically touches wisconsin and indiana all around chicago but not the city so okay. it's all the country the kind of rural areas and great people um it is a uh becoming a republican district and i'm the last republican north so if you want these blue states turning red I'm the last kind of like uh, Alamo in northern Illinois. So elect Also, 
Adam.Kinzinger Instagram, and I do that myself. So I'm, I'll get on it. it. Yeah. Yeah, you help yeah. Instagram. I'll be we're helping all buds soon. now yes. on it. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and spell out Kinzinger for you. It's uh, K I N Z I N G E R. Not at all uh, close to what Jared was right. saying at the top of the I show. I just mispronounced a Big, Z. Bigly. Ah, it's fine. Bigly. It's fine. Well, it's the N you missed, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the two S's. Um, Adam Kinzinger. 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 GIF or yeah. GIF? GIF. GIF? GIF. 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 Uh, no, Owls. congratulations. Thank you for being on the oh, show. Oh, man, I'd love Thank to come you. back. It's Will fun. you come back after yeah. you win? 100%. Yeah. Great. Because after you win, you can talk as much as yeah, you want. Yeah, I know. Right? Then I can just Not really in Congress. let it go. Yeah. Yeah. It's every two years, dude. That's yeah. right. It is. Yeah, but still. Yeah. Any, any dreams of running for anything else? I'd be open to it. You know, I'm a Republican in Illinois, right? It's yes. tough, it's tough. But tough. ultimately, I'm not I overly ambitious. I just want to do where I can make the most impact. You know, three so. of the last governor. four yeah. governors of Illinois have spent time in prison. Yeah, so which actually means, means ah. that the next we have a chance. Moral? Yeah. We have a chance. Blago, have a chance. Blago just got commuted. He he did. Good. Yeah. He's out. Yeah. He's and out. Madigan's about to get a little a little taste of that, yeah. maybe. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So it might be four out of five. <laughs> What's the <laughs> deal there? Is it the property tax is too high? Everybody's stuffing money yeah, in their No, it's, too it's, high. The, it's, it's the aldermen in, in Chicago. Yeah, it's in the Chicago opinion. way. It's just the, alder, Ma- the aldermen in Chicago are the most corrupt politicians oh, yeah. that exist on this totally. planet. Totally. Fuck DC. Yeah. The aldermen in Chicago and the city of Chicago are the biggest Louisiana was the same way until the Republicans took over. Yeah. The Republicans have never really been able to fully take over Illinois. But Am I right DOJ about that? Is about the aldermen in Chicago are like the worst oh, yeah. human beings on earth. That's I mean, well, I, I'm not going to say that. Well, like they're not ISIS, say it, but <laughs> but there is a <laughs> ISIS. Uh, but there is there is a lot of pay for play. Oh yeah, so corrupt. there's a lot of give to my campaign or I'll stop this project from happening. Yeah. Do you right? remember mm, uh, what's yeah. his name from The Wire? What's his name? She. Oh, she. That guy. That's a great show. Yeah. That's oh. the fucking every alderman in Chicago is that guy. Great yeah. character actor. Yeah. Never know his name. Yeah. Uh, no one knows all you remember name. is she. <laughs> <laughs> great show. Yeah, beepers, uh, man. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Beepers. Yeah. beepers and burners. I'll, I'll get us beepers. Good. The new attaché yeah. program it has beepers. Okay, that's beepers it. Yeah. and burners for all. Obama gave free cell phones. Let's yep. let's bring back beepers and burners I'm for in. all. I'm beepers. In. Uh, for Jared Taylor, Adam. Kissinger, uh, <laughs> Anthony, Steve. Anthony Holloway, Fuck I'm Ross up. Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Ooh.